afternoon. Again, it's Monday. So warm welcome to all of you for tuning in to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. Good afternoon, Facebook. Good afternoon, Instagram fam. Um, I welcome you all to my little tiny kitchen in Queens where we make curry. At least I make curry. I also teach classes from this little tiny kitchen. So there's a lot going on when it comes to food, especially Indian food. We are in Queens, New York, and it's a little tiny borough in Queens with a lot of personality. So today my recipe is inspired by um, the Asian part of Queens, which is actually predominantly Flushing, also Elmers. So if you live around Elmers, Broadway, you see all these little tiny Asian eateries and um, food courts and, you know, the aromas that come out of there are amazing. So today I thought, let me get inspired. And I shop in those supermarkets a lot. So I thought, let me put together a recipe from simple supermarket ingredients that is really, really quick and easy and anybody can make it in their kitchen. And I'm using an instant pot for that, but whatever I'm doing here, you can also do it in a saucepan. So I'm just going to turn the camera so we can actually get started. We are making some really spicy or not, depending on what your palate can handle. We are going to make some wonton soup, okay? And uh, I am meatless, so I'm actually doing a combination of, um, I'm gonna use these which are actually fried tofu bean curd, which you get very easily in the Asian supermarket in the freezer sec in the refrigerated section. So I'm gonna use this, and these are for my daughter. So these are just store-bought chicken dumplings. These are for my daughter. So the trick to doing this is to make a really flavorful broth, and then keep adding these things and then let them simmer so that when it's ready, it's absolutely flavorful and there's something in it for everybody. So the first thing that I'm going to put in is garlic. I only have water that's boiling in there right now, nothing fancy. So in goes the garlic. Now, a few things will always add a lot of flavor to your broth. One thing that is store-bought will, which will add flavor to your broth is bouillon powder, right? So you can do um, you can do a veggie broth, you can do a bouillon powder, or if you want to totally skip anything that's store-bought, you can skip this and only use ginger and garlic. So I've used ginger and garlic that's gone in. It could be minced or um, grated. That's fine too. I had some kind of a spoon. I'm going to put in this veggie bouillon. And it's totally optional. Let me see a quick hello to Kali Sama who is joining us. Hello. And we also have Sharmila Das. Hi Sharmila. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. Asha Kori Sumi Bhalo Acho. Welcome. Thank you for joining us here. Um, some of the other things, jumping back to aromatics, some of the other things that really um, add aroma to your food in your broth is definitely some kind of peppers, right? So any kind of bell peppers, green peppers, whatever you have, cut them small. And what I like to do is I like to add the most of them while the broth is boiling. And the rest of it I save for the end so that there will be a nice crunch to them. I also I like to add a lot of carrots. Because even though my daughter wants to have chicken dumpling soup, there's no reason why she can't have some extra vegetables. I always like to pack in vegetables into whatever I'm making. I'm just such a lover of vegetables. So this is, you know, also that kind of a soup where you can literally clean out your refrigerator and put whatever vegetables you have. Like I had one mushroom that's floating around, right? So I made the same soup last night as well, but I forgot about this little guy. So now today she wants to eat it again, but... I'm going to do my version as well. So it's one broth, but we're going to both have the same thing, except that I'm going to eat these and she's going to pick out the dumplings and eat those. Right? So just uh, chop your mushrooms really fine. These are just good old button mushrooms that you get in the Asian supermarket. Nothing uh, fancy. A few other things that add a lot of flavor to your broth are also scallions or onions. If you find the taste of red onions or white onions uh, very strong, you can use green onions. These are scallions. I've saved the greens to use as garnish later on, and I'm just putting the white and the light green parts into my broth. So there's a lot of fiber going on. There's a lot of textures going on. There's a good mouthfeel going on in this pot right now. You can see it's simmering. One other thing that I'm going to put, which is in everybody's freezer, you can put corn. If you have, a, um, you know, the mixed vegetables blend that you buy for your meals, you can put a handful of those. Whatever you've got, just work with those. You don't have to go nuts buying every vegetable out there, okay? 
Like, I swear to God, this lawnmower guy, he either hates me or he loves me or he just knows when I'm going to go on air. Today, I changed my time by one hour so I could avoid this guy. But you know what? He's here. So you know what? This is the guy that loves me more than anybody else. So you may forget to join me sometime, but this guy never forgets to be here when I'm on air. <laughs> Maybe I should feed him some food and bribe him. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> is there anything... Is there anything that I can do that's gonna... Oops, I think I got kicked out of Facebook. Sorry about that. I accidentally closed the window. The other thing that I like to add is cilantro. Oh, baby, there is no such thing as too much cilantro. I do understand that you could be one of those people who doesn't like cilantro. Hi, Meenal. How are you today? Um, if you don't like cilantro, there are many, uh, many ways to go around it. You can use parsley. Use the herbs of your choice. If you don't want to use any greens at all, then just go ahead and amp up the ginger and the garlic. It's going to make your broth extremely flavorful. And also, when you use cilantro, never underestimate the power of the stalks. This is where the maximum flavor is. So just cut off the root where the dirt is stuck. But use the stalks in your broth. It's going to make it heavenly. Also, celery is a good additive that you can add in. Let me just give this a quick stir. Now, I have not added any salt up until now. I am going to use soy sauce and I'm using a dark version but if you're using a light one then you know that it's uh, pretty salty so you know use your discretion don't add salt in the beginning when you're making any soup I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm making about five cups of soup so it's quite a bit and I'll tell you one other thing if half the members in your family eat meat and you don't want any of your food to touch the meat you can actually get a steamer basket put it right on top of whatever saucepan you're making the soup in and you can steam the chicken stuff from there and you can put your veg veggie stuff down below. So I used to do that a lot uh, back in the day. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these. So I've cut these because I want the sponginess of it to absorb a lot of the broth. Right? So you want the flavors to seep in. I don't think it's enough. I might do another one. So these are just store-bought dumplings. These are chicken. You can get them in shrimp. You can get them in pork but this is a really good brand and these are frozen right rock solid frozen I am not doing anything to cook them or defrost them hi Lisa thank you so much for acknowledging that you can't hear the lawnmower that brings a lot of uh, peace to my heart to understand that you are with me but that guy's also with me but then good thing that he's not with you right <laughs> whatever that was confusing all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and plop these frozen gyozas right in there you get them by many different names. So if this is what you're doing for a meal, the average for an adult would be about six pieces. Right? If you have very hungry teenagers, then maybe they can do seven or eight. But I usually put about five or six. And I bought this family pack, and I think this is the fourth or the fifth time that I'm making it, and it's still not finished. Okay. So in my house, of course, my husband is not a soup drinker at all. It's only my daughter. And uh, I like soup, but I don't like the chicken. All right, so I'm going to give it a good stir. I'm also going to put in these. It just goes as it is, right? Now, again, I said if you don't like any meat touching your uh, tofu, you can always do it in a steaming basket. Or you can prepare the dumplings in a pan and then spoon the soup on top of it just before you're serving. One other thing that I want to mention, which adds over-the-top flavor to your Chinese or Asian or Indian-style Chinese dishes, and I think I've mentioned it in every Indian-style Chinese video, is sesame oil. So you've got to get the black sesame oil, and it has like this nutty roasted flavor, and it really takes it over the top, right? Now I'm going to tell you two surprise ingredients, which we never think of putting in food. You know what this is? Check this out. This is actually an essential oil. And no, this is not a sponsored video, but this is an essential oil from doTERRA, and this particular one is lemongrass. Oh my God, I cannot even tell you the intensity. Just two drops. The intensity of these oils is really, they're very potent. And I've made lemonade with it. I've made the basil fried rice with it. 
but the intensity is so potent. I've even made lemon cookies with it, with the lemon one, not with the lemongrass one. And it's intense. It's insane. It's intense. And it's really, really good. So if you have never tried cooking with essential oils, make sure they're edible essential oils and not just something that you can use topically or in your diffuser. So be very careful that they should be edible essential oils. This one is cilantro. And I tell you, it really smells like the stalk of a cilantro plant. It's very intense. I'm just going to put one drop and that should do it. These are optional, but you can use it. And you can make this soup as simple as you want. If you really don't want any bells and whistles, just add the garlic and the bouillon powder and soy sauce and boil everything together with the vegetables. You'll have a great soup. If you want to add layers of flavor, you can add all of these options that I'm giving you. You can pick and choose whichever ones you don't want. Um, one really interesting one, which I forgot to take out from the fridge, is this. I think anybody that loves spicy food or loves spices has this in their fridge. Um, this is actually a chili garlic sauce. It's also called sambal olek. Somewhere it's called shviracha, depending on wherever you're buying it and whatever it's packaged as. So I'm going to go ahead and put this. My daughter likes spicy food. I'm not a fan, but I'm just going to put a little bit. So this already has chiles. It already has a nice garlicky taste to it. It's all gone in. And this is just simmering, so it doesn't have to go in for any particular length of time. But let me show you what is the progress on the dumplings in the time that we were just talking. You see how soft they are now? I can actually cut through this, right? So I'm going to give it a few more seconds. I will check the broth to see if it needs any salt at all. I see it definitely has a kick to it. It needs a little bit of salt. And trust me, I just eyeball everything. This is Himalayan pink salt. You can use any salt of your choice. I'm going to give it a good stir. I might even cover it for a couple of seconds just to have it go faster. <laughs> Let me say a quick hello to Aditi Jadeja who is tuning in from India. Hi Aditi, I hope you're doing well. Aditi is an ace photographer. She also has a very philosophical bent of mind. And she's going to college for mass communication. So we hope that a few years later when I have to figure out my content, I have somebody to call. Right, Aditi? What do you think? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and prepare the scallion for the garnish. I have given all my knives for sharpening. So the bone, bone knife is the only one that I have right now. It's really hard to cut all those things with this. Right? All right, so this is ready. I had saved some of the bell peppers. If you have spinach, if you have anything else that you want to add to this, you can add. You can put little pieces of broccoli. Oh, snap, I forgot. I have to put one more of this because I just feel like those are not enough. I'm just going to go ahead and put one more. If you like paneer, which is the Indian uh, cheese, you can put that. You can put cabbage. You can put noodles. There are so many things that you can put. And uh, ideally, I don't like to really add any cornstarch to make a slurry or to thicken the soup because wonton soup is traditionally supposed to be <coughs> a lighter soup. It's not supposed to be thick and loaded with uh, cornstarch, right? So that's that. What I'm noticing is that the garlic and the ginger have really taken over and I don't really smell any lemongrass. So at this point, I don't know if I should add a little more or just exercise some restraint. Maybe I should add a little more because my daughter wanted it. So I put two more drops and this is about five cups of soup that I'm making. Swanoor is joining us. Hi Swanoor. Welcome to Queen's Curry Kitchen. We are making wonton soup and we are making chicken wontons and then we're also putting fried tofu soybean cakes in there so I can have the tofu and my daughter can have the chicken. I'm going to quickly go get a bowl so I can show you how it looks when it's uh, when it's plated, I'm going to chop up some cilantro to top it with. And you know, you got to go the whole nine yards. So this is a really great soup if you're cooking for a large family. We just put everything in a pot and forget about it. I haven't really set any timer. It's just simmering away. Also, if you have small kids at home and, you know, it's a long day or you're coming back from the park or something, you can put it in your Instapot by the time everybody takes a shower and comes to the dinner table. Um, Soup is ready. It's a really effortless thing. 
you don't even have to go scouting for vegetables you can use canned vegetables you can use frozen vegetables let me quickly go grab a bone and show you what this looks like all righty so here's my bowl and these are the things that I'm going to top it with now there is something called chili oil you get red chili oil in the Asian supermarket if you can find that definitely bring those um, it's great for those that love a lot of heat it just has a nice, deep, intense flavor, and it gives your food a nice color. So I'm going to hit cancel on this because I don't want the dumplings to fall apart. You don't want to overcook this thing, right? As soon as your dumplings are soft and done, you want to take it out. So I'm going to scoop this out. See how soft the bean curd is? Like after soaking in all the broth, it's really soft, right? Do you not wish that you could eat this right now with me? I think so. <laughs> Karami Rezes, welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. We are just plating up some soup that we made today. Lemongrass, coriander, it's called cilantro, uh, vegetable soup. And I also have some chicken dumplings that I put in there for my daughter. There you go. So for all you chicken lovers or people who are living in uh, a flexitarian lifestyle or you have an omnivorous family, this is what it looks like. I'm going to add some cilantro to this. And I'm going to add some green onions. And last but not the least, I'm going to give it a little few drops of sesame oil, which is the thing that really takes it over the top. It has a very deep kind of a miso, smoky taste. It would actually make you feel like you're eating in a very expensive Chinese restaurant. So that's the feel that it gives to your food. Um, I will add it to the rest of the pot as well, but I'll do that just before serving. I won't do it now. Um, I just feel like I don't like to cook with the sesame oil, but I like to use it as a garnish. Okay, so now for the moment of truth, a really quick taste. It's super duper hot. And you can see how light the broth is, right? Oops, I think Facebook can't see me anymore. So you can see how super duper light the broth is. This is not a thick soup that has been thickened with uh, cornstarch slurry or anything. And the bean curd is super soft. It's literally just falling apart. It's really soft and spongy. So I'm going to go give it a good taste. And I will tell you how it tastes, right? If you want to try this, you should send me some hearts. Show me some love. Share this page with your friends. If you want to take a class, you can always join queenscurrykitchen.com on the internet. All the classes are there. Ah, super hot. Oh, my God. I cannot even begin to describe the beauty of this soup. Just one sip of the broth. It's just perfectly salty. It's perfectly um, sesame-ish. And the scallions, the cilantro have all released their flavors into this broth. It's extremely flavorful. The vegetables taste really good. You can actually uh, sense the bell pepper in the background. There is not that much heat even though I added this. And some people actually like to add a pinch of sugar to their soups just to balance the umami. But I didn't do any of that stuff. No sugar here, no oil here, nothing, right? So this was our soup for today. I hope you enjoyed this journey into... Um, my life in Queens where I get inspired by all of the ethnic foods that I'm surrounded by day in and day out. If there is any particular food from Queens that you would like to see on this channel or if you would like to learn how to make it live, um, do let me know. I am going to start going outside and filming a lot of restaurants that are in the neighborhood that are also serving ethnic food and I would love for you to join me on that journey. If you'd like to see something like that, definitely let me know. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you to each and every one of you that came on board today. If you'd like to order my book, it's on www.queenscurrykitchen. The book is called The Vegan Indian Home. If you live in New York, there is a surprise for you that, you that I will be announcing really soon. There are giveaways coming up and there is a big surprise in terms of how the Queen's Curry Kitchen has expanded. Our food will be available to you at your door if you live in New York. Yes! So you know what, stay tuned for that information as well. To order the spices, or to take one of my classes, all the information is on the website www.queenscurrykitchen.com. Like always, 
be blissful, be flavorful, find your center, find your oasis, create some beauty around yourself, be kind to others, and keep showing me the love that you're showing me today. I appreciate each and every one of you for all the time that you spent with me. Namaste, and I will see you real soon, which is tomorrow, right? That's not that far. So tomorrow we will be back again in business, and we will be coming up with another locking, popping, jamming, happening recipe, which is going to be easy for you to put together. Thanks again. I will see you soon. Take good care and bye-bye.